As most major DAWs have already made the move to support Dolby Atmos and immersive audio natively, I thought it was wise to make a video to talk about them. My name is Alejandro and we are the Audio Brewers. As 2024 kicks in, I thought it was nice to make a video talking about every major doll out there and its capabilities when it comes to immersive music and Dolby Atmos. I have grabbed every major doll that I could find and I'm going to be exploring its capabilities when it comes to immersive music and Dolby Atmos and then I'm going to rank them from worst to best. Please mind that this is just my personal opinion. You might have some different opinion. I would love to hear it in the comment section below. Perhaps you could write it down. And mind that this video is not made to talk about DOS when it comes to composing music, arranging music, tracking or recording music, or even um, audio editing. This is merely to talk about mixing in Dolby Atmos. So let's get started. So before we get into the DOS, I'm going to talk about external renderers. There are two external renderers available as of today. One of them is the Dolby Atmos renderer from Dolby. And the other one is the DAC, which is the Dolby Atmos composer from Fiddler Audio. In this video, I'm not going to be talking about the Dolby Atmos renderer from Dolby because in my opinion, it doesn't really add anything new to renderers that come already integrated in most um, DOS that support Dolby Atmos natively. And additionally, you cannot connect it to DOS that don't come with a renderer. Finally, it's only compatible with Mac. So for these three reasons, I'm not going to be talking about this renderer. However, the DAC, the Dolby Atmos Composer from Fiddler Audio, I'm going to be talking about it because it can make any single DAW compatible with Dolby Atmos. Now let's move on to the DOS. I'm going to be grabbing every single major DAW that I could find and I'm going to be exploring its capabilities when it comes to mixing uh, music for immersive audio or Dolby Atmos. In the end, all these comments that I will have made in this video, I'm going to use them to rank the DOS from worst to best in my personal opinion. And like that, you maybe could get a grasp of what you could use for 2024 for mixing your music in immersive formats. And so because there are plenty of major DOS that I'm going to be exploring, I'm going to make a very, very simple test, which is going to be the following. I have here five audio files. One is a stereo file, a 712 file, a first order ambisonics file, a third order ambisonics file, and a seventh order ambisonics file. I'm going to be adding all these files in each DAW and I'm going to be mixing them in a Dolby Atmos environment and I'm going to check the possibilities that each DAW will offer me. Now let's talk about DaVinci Resolve. Some of you might not know DaVinci Resolve. Some of you uh, might think that DaVinci Resolve is just a video editor, but let me tell you that Blackmagic has really stepped their game sharply when it comes to the audio capabilities of DaVinci Resolve. And I consider it to be a very important DAW because it's really, really up there in the Dolby Atmos and in the surround sound sphere. So let's start by saying that yes, DaVinci Resolve supports um, surround sound um, natively and thanks to the Audio Brewers ecosystem you can also work in ambisonics from first to third order. Additionally you can also mix um, uh, Dolby Atmos uh, productions with DaVinci Resolve but you can also use the Dolby Atmos composer. So first of all I must say that using the integrated renderer that DaVinci Resolve brings is quite difficult and I find it a lot cumbersome because you have to be keeping uh, track of what's going to an object and what's going to the bed um, in a window that is not convenient at all, but still it supports three-dimensional objects and I like that. So I'm just going to explore the way of doing a mix using the integrated renderer here. So first of all, the most important thing that I must do is change my main bus width to be the width of a bed. That means that it must be 712. But for some reason, DaVinci Resolve doesn't allow me to change the buses until I have inserted some media. Why? I don't know. So the first thing I'm going to do is insert my stereo file. And once I insert my stereo file, you'll see that my bus width has changed to be stereo. I'm going to have to change its width to be that of an Atmos bed. So for that, I'm going to go to Fairlight bus format. And in the bus format, I'm going to change it to be 712. It has to be 712 because this is the width of a bed. I'm going to change the name to keep track. 
And once this has been set as the width of my bed, I'm gonna have to route it to the bed of the Dolby Atmos renderer. And from doing that, I'm gonna have to go to the patch input output. And once I'm in the patch input output, I'm gonna go to the source and to the bus out, meaning that I am going to go from the bus out and I'm going to set as destination my Dolby Atmos sense, meaning that I'm going to patch from my bus to my Dolby Atmos sense. And next, I'm going to select the 10 channels of my 712 bed and link them to the 10 channels of the Dolby Atmos bed. Once I select the 10 channels, all I have to do is click on patch. And you will see that now my Atmos bed is going to the bed of my Dolby Atmos renderer. So once I press play, You can see that now this is going to the stereo output of my Dolby Atmos bed, and you can see that this is now a Dolby Atmos mix because you have here the double D. You can select your layout from here. I'm gonna leave it in binaural so that you can hear. And once my stereo track, let me just rename this, is going to my bed, you can just play with the panner and rotate it as you wish. Now let's say that I want to create a stereo object. So for creating a stereo object, what I'm gonna have to do, first of all, is not to send this to my Atmos bed. And for doing that, all I have to do is go to my bus output and remove the bus output to my bed. And now if I press play, you will see that you cannot hear anything because now this track is not going anywhere. Now I'm gonna have to link the left and the right of my stereo track to two objects of my Dolby Atmos renderer. For doing that, I'm gonna go again to my patch input output. And this time I'm gonna go to the track direct and I'm going to select the left and the right of my stereo track. And then I'm going to select two objects of my Dolby Atmos renderer and again, click on patch. And once I do that, you can see that two of my Dolby Atmos objects are linked to my left and right of my stereo track. So if I press play this time, you can see that you can now hear audio, but you cannot see anything on the bed, meaning that this is going to an object. So now I have here the object panner, and now I can pan this as a stereo object. And this will be the way to work with a stereo track. Now, let's move on to our three-dimensional tracks. First of all, I'm going to drag my 712 file into DaVinci. You can see that it recognizes the file as a 712, but it doesn't recognize it as a 712 Dolby Atmos. I'm going to make sure that this is seen as a Dolby Atmos track by changing the track height to Dolby Atmos 712. And once I do that and I press play, You can see that now this is going to my bed and I can also pan it. And this is the way that this track will go to my bed. Now, can I convert this track to a three-dimensional object? Well, yes, I can by following the same steps that I did with my stereo track. Let me just change the name of this track. I'm going to stop sending this track to the bed and then I'm going to use the Fairlight patch input output to patch this track to the next set of objects. Now, here you have to mind that when patching to a three-dimensional object, you should never patch the LFE uh, channel of your track because objects don't contain LFE because the LFE channel is supposed to be only on the bed because it's supposed to be omnidirectional. So in this case, I'm just going to select the nine channels that come with the 712 minus the LFE, and I'm going to select nine uh, objects of my Dolby Atmos renderer. And then I'm gonna click on patch. And just like that, now this is a three-dimensional object. Once I press play again, you can see that nothing is going to the bed, and now I can open my panner, and again, I can play with the rotation of my three-dimensional object. And now let's move on to the first order ambisonics track.
for the first order Amazonics track, I'm gonna try and drag my track, but you can see that this is not seeing it as one track, but instead as four monophonic tracks. And this is because sometimes DaVinci doesn't interpret uh, audio files uh, properly. So what I'm going to do is add the track to my pool and right click on it and change the attributes so that I force it to be a quadraphonic track. And then I'm just gonna force this to be a quadraphonic uh, track and delete the other three. And once I do that, I can now drag my track to DaVinci and you will see that it is now seeing it as a quadraphonic track. Now, it is very important that I change the width of this track to be 916 Dolby Atmos because the Audio Brewers um, ecosystem works only in Dolby Atmos 916 track. So it doesn't matter if you're working with first, second or third other ambisonics, always use a Dolby Atmos 916 track. So now that I have done it, let me just rename this track and let me insert the AB decoder. And once I insert the AB decoder, if I press play, let me just lower the volume. You can see that I am now getting the 916 layout from the first order Ambisonics track. And if I go to my panner, you can see that I can pan everything. and everything works quite nicely. Um, right now, this track is going to my bed. Again, if I wanted to create a three-dimensional object with it, all I would have to do is just stop sending this to the bed and instead go to the Fairlight menu and to the Patch Input Outputs and again, select all the channels of the track, but the LFE. That means that I'm going to select 15 channels. Now that I have selected 15 channels, I'm going to select 15 channels from my Dolby Atmos renderer. I'm going to then click on patch. Once I do that, now my first order Amazonics track is going to my Dolby Atmos renderer as an object. And again, I can still just pan the object three-dimensionally. it works quite nicely despite the difficulties of the patcher. Finally, I'm going to do the same with the third order Ambisonics track. I'm going to drag the track. As you can see, it doesn't interpret the WAV file correctly. So again, I'm going to add it to my timeline and I'm going to change the attributes to be a 16 channel track. That means Dolby Atmos 916 and the format to be Dolby Atmos 916 and then to delete all the others. So once I drag this to my project, I just make sure that this is a Dolby Atmos 916 track. This is very important. You can see that now it's set as a 916. I'm just going to just make sure that it is a Dolby Atmos 916. Yeah. And then let me just change the name of this track. If I insert the higher order Ambisonics decoder now to my third other Amazonics track and I press play. You can now see that my track is going to my bed and I can just go to the panner and just rotate the track as I wish. And it works quite nicely. Now, let's send this to a three-dimensional object, but let's do it a bit differently. I'm just going to say that I want to create a three-dimensional object with this track, but I don't want it to be 916. So what I'm going to have to do is create a new bus that is going to downmix this 916 track to something different. So for doing that, I'm going to go to Fairlight and I'm going to add a new bus. And my bus is going to be, let's just say, Dolby Atmos 514. Let me just change the color just to keep track of it. And then I'm going to make sure to send my third Dolby Amazonics track to my new bus. I didn't change the name of the bus. Let me just do that real quick. Uh, 
And for doing that, I'm going to stop sending it to my bed and I'm going to send it to my new bus instead. And if I press play, you can see that now this track is being sent to my new bus, but it's not being heard. That is because this bus is not going anywhere yet. So what I could do is either send it to my bed or create a three dimensional object with it, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go again to the patch input output. But because this is a bus and it's not a track, I'm going to have to go again to bus out. And now I'm going to select the nine channels of my 514 track because the LFE is not to be selected. So I'm just going to select everything but the LFE. Nine channels. And then I'm going to select nine channels from my Dolby Atmos renderer. Once I do that, I just click on patch. And now this track is being output as a three-dimensional object. If I press play, you can see that now we can hear it. And additionally, we can again open the panner and change its rotation. And everything I do is going to happen at object level. And just like that, I can manage my Dolby Atmos mix using DaVinci Resolve with the integrated Dolby Atmos renderer. I still believe that this is way too complicated, having to be opening the patcher every time and keeping track of whatever I have patched, whatever is going to the bed, whatever is going to an object. But still, it is the way it is. We can also use the Dolby Atmos Composer to make things a bit more streamlined for, I don't know, audio engineers, perhaps. And this is what I'm going to do now by starting a new empty project. OK, so I have here our empty project. And what I'm going to do first is insert as an effect our Dolby Atmos Composer. So for doing that, all I have to do is add the Dolby Atmos Composer. And now that my Dolby Atmos Composer is there, I'm going to start by adding our stereo file. And you can see that as soon as I add my stereo file, for some reason, the Composer disappeared. So I'm just going to insert it again. OK, and now what I'm going to be doing is sending this stereo um, track to the Dolby Atmos Composer. If I press play right now, you can see that there is no sound because the Dolby Atmos Composer is waiting for audio. So for doing that, I'm going to add my beam. And you can see that now the Composer has seen the track and the beam is sending the track in stereo mode. So if I press play, let me just change this to be um, binaural. So if I press play, you can see that it's going to the bed. So I'm going to convert this to a three-dimensional object. All I have to do is go to my pan mode and change it to objects. And you can see now that it has grabbed the two little objects and now it is a stereophonic object. So if I press play, I can now change the position of the object around my head. It works pretty well. Um, this is how I create a stereo object. Let's move on to our next um, file. For my next file, which is going to be the 712 file, I'm going to try and drag this file to a track. And you can see that it has detected it properly. And if I add the beam to this track, Um, you can see that it is detecting that it is a 712 um, track correctly and it is sending it to the bed. So if I press play, it's going to the bed correctly. So what if I want to create a three-dimensional object with this 712 file? Can I do that? Well, yes, I can. Thanks to the Dolby Atmos Composer, I can create a three-dimensional object in DaVinci. And like that, I can change the characteristics of this object, such as the azimuth, the elevation, and the distance, etc.
and it works really, really, really well. And just like that, I have my three-dimensional object created. So when it comes to Ambisonics tracks, let's see what happens if I insert my first order Ambisonics track. You can see that it is not detecting a track um, properly. So all I have to do is insert it to the pool and I have to change its attributes so that it sees it as a four channel audio. So all I have to do is just make it a quad and let me just delete this and set the format to be quad. And once I do that, it can now see the first order Ambisonics track. So I'm going to change the tracks width to be Dolby Atmos 916. So for the Audio Brewers ecosystem to work properly, you always have to use a 916 Dolby Atmos track. It doesn't matter if it's a first, second, or third Dolby Amazonics, and it doesn't matter what the width of your final um, decoded um, audio will be. So I'm using here a 916 track with my first order Ambisonics uh, file. And now all I have to do is in my first insert, I'm going to add uh, our decoder. And once the decoder has been added, if I press play, you can see that it's now decoding to 916 because the width of the track is now 16. And if I add the beam now after the decoder, sorry, here, it is already sending everything to the Dolby Atmos composer. So if I press play. You see that the sound is being sent to my bed. Can I create a three-dimensional object with this? I pretty much can. So now I have created a 916 three-dimensional object. So I can grab this object and I can change its properties on the fly. And it works like a charm. So what happens when I use a third order Ambisonics track? Okay, so let's add the third order Ambisonics track. Um, you can see that it doesn't interpret it properly. So I'm gonna do the same, add it to the pool and change the attribute so that it is a 16 channel track. So what I'm going to do is make it a Dolby Atmos 916 track. And I'm going to create a Dolby Atmos 916 configuration. And I'm going to delete everything else. And once I do that, if I drag it, you can see that now it's seeing it as one file. So I'm just gonna make sure that the width of my track is Dolby Atmos 916. And just like that, if I add my AB decoder higher order and I press play, just like that, I have my um, file being decoded to 916. And all I have to do now is add the beam. And once the beam is added, if I open my Dolby Atmos composer and if I press play, you can see that the track is being sent to my bed. Can I create an object with this track? Yes, I can. All I have to do is change the pan mode to objects and you can see now that this is now a three dimensional object. So I can change its properties on the fly. It works pretty, pretty, pretty well. And like that, I can create my Dolby Atmos mix using DaVinci Resolve Studio. This is a pretty, pretty cool approach. You can work on your audiovisual projects and everything can work. And now let's enter the land of one of the most important doors in the history of music technology, which is Pro Tools. Pro Tools is one of the oldest doors. It has like 30 something years of age and it's still here, it's rocking. And in the latest update, Pro Tools added support for seventh order Ambisonics tracks. So we can start by saying that yes, Pro Tools has um, native uh, surround support. It has uh, native Ambisonic support from first to third order Ambisonics in the studio version and from first to 
to 7th order ambisonics in the ultimate version it also has a dolby atmos renderer included but you cannot create three-dimensional objects with it really have it you added support for 7th order ambisonics tracks and you let us with mono and stereo objects why would you do that however there is the dolby atmos composer to the rescue you can use dolby atmos composer to create three-dimensional objects and that saves the day pretty much. So here we are in an empty project and I'm going to be adding each of the files to a new track um, to see its support and how I can implement it in a Dolby Atmos um, mix. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a 714 master fader because I want to be able to control my stuff. It's gonna be linked to my renderer and I'm going to open the Dolby Atmos renderer. So here you have the Dolby Atmos renderer and you have the bed and etc. etc. So first thing I'm going to do is create a stereo audio track and add my stereo file. So for doing that, I'm going to go to a new stereo audio track. And I'm going to add the stereo file. So if I press play, You can see that it's not going to my Dolby Atmos renderer yet, and that is because I have to route it to my bed, for example. So if I route it to my bed and I go to the sound, you can see that now it's going to the bed. And I can also change it to be an object. And you can see that now it has taken the two um, stereo objects for my stereo file, and if I press play, you can see that the renderer now is uh, routing the audio to my object. So I can also change the position of these objects by using the panner that comes with uh, Pro Tools. So all I have to do is just play with the position of the object. Let me just change the monitoring to binaural, for example. And like that, you can accommodate your stereo object anywhere you want in your mix. Now, let's move on to our immersive file, which is a 712 file. So if I add my immersive file to the track, you can see that it reads it properly and I can send it to my bed. And if I press play, sorry for that. Let me just lower the volume. You can see that it's going to my bed. It's a 712 file. It's going to a 712 bed. Everything works perfectly fine. There is nothing uh, to comment, but I cannot change this to an object. Why? Why can't I make a three-dimensional object with it? I'm just stuck to using a bed. I could create an extra bed to send this to another bed, but just, just defeats the purpose of Dolby Atmos, which, which is object-based audio. Come on, Avid add three-dimensional objects now. We really, really want them. So that's it. I'm limited to that. I can have my 712 file um, to send to my bed. Okay, let's move on to our Ambisonics file. So if I create a first order Ambisonics track and I add my first order Ambisonics file, it inserts pretty well. And all I have to do is insert a decoder. So I'm going to add a B decoder and I'm going to decode it to whatever I want. Let's just say that I want to decode it to, I don't know, uh, 512. So you can see that the decoder already suggested, uh, suggests the 512 and I can send that to my bed. And if I press play, it's going to my bed properly, um, but again, I cannot create an object with this. I mean, it's so frustrating. So I can be stuck with two bets. I can create new bets for it, but that's all I can do. Now let's move on to our third order Ambisonics file. So I'm going to create a third order Ambisonics track. And I'm going to add my file to it. And all I have to do is insert a decoder. I'm going to insert my higher order Ambisonics decoder and I'm going to decode it to whatever I want. Just, just say a 714. 
it's uh, decoding correctly. And all I have to do is send it again to my bed because I am stuck to a bed. I cannot create a three-dimensional object. Does it work? Yes, it works, but I want a three-dimensional object. Come on, Avid, give me a three-dimensional object. If I press play, you can see that I have the bed there. Everything works perfectly fine. And now let's just move to the seventh order Ambisonics um, file. So if I create a new seventh order Ambisonics track, and I add my file to it. You see that it has added it properly and all I have to do is insert a decoder and I'm going to decode to whatever I want. Let's just say that I want to decode to, the, to 916. It's being decoded properly. But what is the point of having 916 if I am stuck to a 712 bed? So I could just send it to my bed so that it just makes it 712. So if I press play in this. I'm here um, stuck to my bed. I'm stuck to beds. Uh, this supports um, stereo objects, mono objects, uh, but then when it comes to um, surround type of objects, I cannot do it. I am stuck to just using beds. But here comes the Dolby Atmos composer to the rescue. So what if instead of using the Dolby Atmos renderer, uh, let me just um, send everything to my output instant, instead of the renderer. And this is not going to be an object anymore. And now that I am not using the renderer, let's just com confirm. Okay, now the renderer is not being used. And now I'm going to create a Dolby Atmos mix with the Dolby Atmos composer. First, I'm going to add the Dolby Atmos composer to my master bus. So let me just add it here. And you see that I have now here the window of the Dolby Atmos composer. So first I'm going to add the beam to my stereo track. And as you can see, as soon as I add the beam, it's being sent to my composer. Let me just mute these tracks. Let me just send them nowhere because I don't want to listen to them yet. So if I press play, now I have my stereo um, uh, track going to the Dolby Atmos composer through the beam. And like that, I can create an object, which is going to be a stereo object, and I can rotate my object. Let me just make this um, binaural, okay? And if I start rotating this, it works perfectly fine. So let's move on to our next track, which is the 712 track. Um, let me just insert the beam. And it is a 712 track, so it's a 712 beam. You see that now it's being received. So if I press play, sorry for that. Let me just lower the volume. You can see that now my track is going to my bed. And can I make an, a three-dimensional object with it? Yes, I can. So with the Dolby Atmos Composer, I can create a three-dimensional object. And again, I can change the size, the rotation, and whatever I want of the object with no problem. So if I do that, anything I want can be done with the three-dimensional object. And that's that. This is how I solve the problem of Pro Tools. Um, let's move on to our next uh, track, which is the first Order Ambisonics track, which right now I am decoding to 512. And let's just add the beam here. Uh, it is a 512 beam. And you can see that it is already being uh, detected as a 512 signal. And I also have to send this to an output. So let's just send it here. So if I press play, you can see that the signal is being sent to the bed properly. So if I convert this to an object, boom, you can see here that I have my three dimensional order object working. So if I select everything, I again can do anything I want with my three dimensional object. anything I want with my three-dimensional object. Marvelous. Okay, now let's move on to our next track, which is the third order of Amazonics track, which right now I am decoding to 714. Let me just send it to an output. And now it is a 714. So if I add the beam, it's going to be a 714 beam. 
you can see that it is being received by the Dolby Atmos Composer. And I can change it to be an object. And it can be a three-dimensional object. So everything works perfectly fine. So if I select everything and I start messing around, I can do anything I want with it. Marvelous. Okay, let's move on to the next track, our final track, the seventh order ambisonics track. If I add the beam to it, it is a 916 um, track that we have decoded to. So we need a 916 beam. It works perfectly fine. And if I send it, um, you can see here that the Dolby Amos composer is receiving it. So if I send it uh, to be a three dimensional object, you can see here that it has grabbed everything it needs. So yes, you can create three dimensional objects in Pro Tools using the Dolby Atmos Composer. And you can do everything again. You can rotate, change the elevation, the distance, whatever you want. So if I press play. It works perfectly fine. And this is how you solve the situation with um, Pro Tools. Because Pro Tools, why do you not support three dimensional objects? Well. Dolby Atmos Composer to the rescue. Um, these glitches is something that really annoys me. If uh, this could be fixed, that would be awesome. But anyway, other than that, Dolby Atmos Composer works really, really well for Pro Tools and it solves the problem of not having three dimensional objects. Let's move on to our next DAW. Now I'm going to talk about Studio One 6.5, which was one of the most celebrated updates during 2023 because it is one of the most used uh, DOS when it comes to music composers and the fact that they updated it for it to support surround and all the Atmos was a huge, huge deal. So I can tell you that now um, Studio One 6.5 supports um, uh, surround sound natively. It supports uh, Dolby Atmos natively. It includes a Dolby Atmos renderer um, natively. And thanks to yours truly, it supports Ambisonics tracks from uh, first to third order Ambisonics, uh, but it doesn't support three-dimensional objects. Luckily, there is Dolby Atmos Composer from Fiddler Audio where uh, we can create our own Dolby Atmos mix and we can include three-dimensional objects for our mixes. So making it really, really immersive. Let's get to the DAW. I have here my empty project. If I open the Dolby Atmos renderer just to have it here open, I'm going to start dragging uh, my file. So first, I'm going to start with the stereo file. If I drag it um, and if I press play, you can see that it automatically is going to my bed. Um, I can change it and convert it to a, a stereo object by simply going to the panner and making it a spatial object. So if I do that, you can see that now it is being seen as an object and now I can pan it anywhere I want. Let me just change the output to binaural. And just like that, I have created my first object, which is a stereo object. Now let's move on to our next file. If I drag my 712 file into Studio One, you can see that for some reason it detects that it's a 514, but I can change that and I can make it 712. And then I can press play. And you can see that it is going uh, to my bed. However, as you can see, for some reason, it is not interpreting uh, this, the files properly because it still thinks that it's a 514 file. So to solve that, I can go here and I can change the speaker format to 712. So if I confirm and I press play, and if we lower the volume a little bit, now I have my 712, and this is something that you really have to have in mind. Sometimes Studio One will interpret the files a bit differently, so you always have to be checking um, if you right click on the file that it is seeing the speaker layout um, correctly. If it's not, then you have to just fix it. Okay, so now I have my 712 file going to my bed, and that's it. I'm stuck. I cannot create a three dimensional object with it, unfortunately. Like, even if I go here, you don't have an object panner. So this is where we stay. So all I can do is send this to my bed and my um, three dimensional files, my surround files can only be sent to my bed. Okay, let's move on to our first order Ambisonics. So if I drag my first order Ambisonics file here, by default, um, 
Studio One doesn't support ambisonics, but thanks to Audioverse, it definitely does. So all I have to do is make sure that it's seeing the file as a 4.0 music. It's very important because there are two types of 4.0, which is cine and music. You want music. Okay, so once it sees it as a music, all I have to do is add one of our decoders. So in this case, I'm just going to add the AB decoder. And if I open my decoder, it's already decoding to 712, which is the width of my bed. So if I press play, you can see that is now going to the bed. And first order ambisonics using AB decoder going to my 712 bed. And this is where I get stuck because I cannot create three dimensional um, objects with um, Studio One. Now let's move on to the third order ambisonics file. What about it? Okay, so let's just drag the third order ambisonics file into Studio One. And all I have to do again is add my decoder as a panner, which is going to be the AB decoder higher order ambisonics. And you see that it is already decoding to 712, which is the width of my bed. So if I press play, You can see that the third order ambisonics file is being decoded to the width of my bed, which is 712. Pretty cool. However, I cannot create a three dimensional object with it. However, it is really cool that we can use ambisonics um, files from first to third order in Studio One thanks to the Audio Brewers um, ecosystem. And this is where we stop because there is no way we can support seventh order ambisonics files in Studio One as of now, because Studio One doesn't support um, files that are wider than 16 channels and seventh order ambisonics files contain 64 channels. So how can we solve the fact that we don't have three dimensional objects here? Well, here comes uh, Dolby Atmos Composer to the rescue. So for doing that, I will have to convert this mix to not be Dolby Atmos by uh, Studio One natively. So all I have to do is go to my spatial audio and change the mode from Dolby Atmos to surround. Let me just make it 714, which is the width of my bed. And you can see that now the renderer is gone but we're going to add our own renderer, which is going to be the composer. And so now we have the Dolby Atmos composer. And all we have to do now is use a beam in each of my tracks so that I can send them to the composer. So let's start with the stereo track. I'm going to add the beam. Um, okay, let me just... And you see that now the beam is sending the signal to the Dolby Atmos composer. So if I press play, my stereo file is going to my bed, as you can see. And I can change this to be an object by simply selecting objects here. And by making it an object, I can rotate it, change the elevation, change the size, and etc. etc. Let me just change this to be binaural. So that works really, really, really well and is very, very easy to do. So now let's move on to our 712 um, track. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add the beam. And you can see that the beam is detecting the 712 track. Everything is working nicely and is being sent to my bed. So if I press play, It works really, really well. And now, can I make a three-dimensional object? Yes, I can, thanks to the Dolby Atmos Composer. I now have a three-dimensional object here, and I can change, again, the azimuth, the elevation, the distance, and everything I want. Really, really cool and really, really easy. And like this, I already have two objects out of which one is three-dimensional. Let's move to our next track. Our next track is a uh, first order ambisonics track. It's being decoded at the very end. So I cannot add the beam here because the beam has to be added after the decoder. So what I can do is create a bus channel. And this bus channel um, is going to be receiving my signal here. So let me just send uh, this to my bus. And finally, I'm going to change the panel of the bus to be one of our decoders. And now I'm sending a 714 decoded file to my bus because my bus is 714. 
And what I have to do is use the beam to beam this bus to the Dolby Atmos composer. You can see that the beam is already detecting 714, so if I press play, it is properly being sent to my bed, and can I convert it to an object? Yes, I can convert it to a three-dimensional object. That was pretty easy. So now I can just, you know, move the object however I want in my mix. That was pretty easy and it works really, really well. And now let's go to my final track, which is the third Order Ambisonics track. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a new bus. But this time I want to create a bus that is 916. Let's see what happens. So if I send this to my 916 bus and I insert a B decoder, it detects automatically that it's a 916 signal. This is pretty awesome. And now if I insert my beam, you can see that the beam is detecting a 916 signal. And if I press play, And I want this signal is going to the bed. And finally, can I create an object with this? Yes, I can create a three-dimensional object with this, which is pretty amazing because now I can change the shape of the object however I want. And just like that, I have my three-dimensional mix. I am using three-dimensional objects just like I want to do it because one thing is spatial audio and another one is immersive audio. And the best thing is to be able to combine both of them. And just like that, I can work with Studio One. I really, really wish that Presonus would allow us to create three-dimensional objects in Studio One natively, but you know, for the time being, we have the Dolby Atmos composer that can do that for us really, really easily. Let's move on to our next DAW. So here we have Nuendo, which pretty much will be the same than Cubase Pro when it comes to mixing music in Dolby Atmos. We can start by saying that they both support surround sound natively, they both support ambisonics from first to third order, and they both come with an integrated Dolby Atmos renderer. They both support three-dimensional Dolby Atmos um, objects, and you can also use Dolby Atmos Composer to create your Dolby Atmos mix and to support as well um, three-dimensional objects, even though it is not needed because everything comes with the included renderer. The bad thing is that it doesn't support um, orders beyond third order. I mean, Steinberg, you just released a VST um, version that supports up to seventh order ambisonics, and in your latest update of Nuendo and Cubase, you didn't include um, these formats in the DAW. Why? Okay, so let's get to the DAW. Let's start by creating a Dolby Atmos mix. And for doing that, we're gonna get the setup assistant and I'm just gonna add everything. And then I'm going to just route my output to the renderer that it created. And I'm going to remove my stereo bus. And here we have ready our Dolby Atmos mix. It is that easy. And now let's just start by adding each of the stems. So let's start by creating a stereo track for our first file. And I'm going to drag my stereo file. So if I press play, You can see that the stereo file goes to the bed all right. And I can also pan this stereo file three dimensionally if I opened the panner and I can just move it around. Let me just grab this from here. Let me just down mix this to stereo so that you can hear it. So it works really well. And now I want to convert this track to an object. So I'm going to do that. For doing that, I just go to my ADM. And my selected track is going to be an object. And that's it. Now this track is an object. You can see here that it says object. So if you open the panner, um, you can also pan the object around. And you can see that it has taken the two objects. So if I press play.
So it supports stereo objects. Now let's move on to our next track, which is going to be the 712 track. So for that, I'm going to create an audio track. It's going to be a 712 track. And I'm going to add my 712 file. As you can see, it imports the file with no problems. And if I press play, it goes straight to the bed. All right. But what if I want to create a three-dimensional object with this 712 file? Is it possible? So we're just going to go to our project, our ADM. And with the selected audio, I'm going to create an object from the selected audio. And just like that, it created a three-dimensional object. You can see that it has grabbed all the objects it needs. And now you can have a three-dimensional object, which you can move and resize and reshape everything you need um, from within the panel of Nuendo. Let's see it. And just like that, you have a three-dimensional object and you have a stereo object. Of course, you can um, insert uh, different effects to each object if you want. It is not a limitation. Now, let's move on to our first order ambisonics track. So, so if I add a first order ambisonics track and I drag my file in it, it natively already supports the first order ambisonic track. So if I press play, you can see that it's already decoding the first order ambisonic track and it's sending it to my bed. I can switch to AB decoder if I wish. I really feel that the decoding is a little bit more clear if I use it, so I'm just gonna do that. And from within the decoder, I can rotate and I can um, change the dominance of my first order ambisonics file. But what if I want to create a three-dimensional object with a first order ambisonics file? Well, for that, all I have to do is create a group track, which is going to be the width I desire my object to be. It can be any width, stereo, uh, 51, 512, 514, um, 714, 716, 916, whatever I want. So let me see what I can do here. I'm just going to create a 714 and I'm gonna name it first order ambisonics to 714. And I'm going to send my first order ambisonics track to that group. For that, instead of sending it to the bed, I'm sending it to the group. And now the sound is going to my group, which is this. So if I press play, you can see that it's now going to the 714. Um, my AB decoder ad automatically adapted to the 714. And now, can I create a three-dimensional 714 object with this? Let's check it out. If I go to my project, ADM, and I create an object from selected track, boom, you can see that now I have a 714 object and it has grabbed every single needed object. So now this track is an object and I can rotate it, reshape it, shrink it, make it wider or move it around uh, as I want. So I can do that. And just like that, I have a three-dimensional 714 object. Now let's move on to our third order ambisonics track. So I'm going to add a third order ambisonics file. And I'm going to drag the file to the track. And automatically, you see that uh, Nuendo is converting the third order ambisonics to the 712 bed. So if I press play, you can see that everything is being decoded. I'm going to change the decoder to AB decoder in higher order because I really like best uh, the quality it um, provides. And if I press play, you can see that from within the decoder, you can also rotate the signal and you can... Uh, pretty much just put the signal the way you want. What if I want to create a three-dimensional object with this third order ambition extract? Can I do it? Let's try it. I'm just going to create a new um, group track. Um, it can be any width I want from stereo to whatever I want. So in this case, I'm just going to create a 514. Um, five Let's just say. 
So I'm just going to name it from third order amisonics to 514. And then I'm going to route my third order amisonics track to the group I created, which is the 514. And as you can see, my decoder has automatically adapted to 514. And so if I select my 514 group and I convert it to an object, boom, you can see that now I have a 514 three-dimensional object. And the object can now be resized, reshaped, rotated, or whatever I want to do with it. So if I press play, So pretty much everything I want to do, I can do it uh, from stock Nuendo. So what if I wanted to use the Dolby Atmos Composer from Fiddler Audio? It's not really needed to use it when it comes to Nuendo because Nuendo already supports the three-dimensional objects, but nonetheless, let's just move to it. I'm going to create an empty project again, and instead of converting it to a Dolby Atmos project from Nuendo, I'm going to add um, the Dolby Atmos Composer to my master bus. So for doing that, I'm just going to go here and in insert the Dolby Atmos Composer. And then I'm going to add, again, just like I did before, a stereo track. And I'm going to add my stereo file. So I have my stereo file here, as you can see, it's not going to my Dolby Atmos composer yet, but I can do that just by inserting the Dolby Atmos beam, and that's what I'm going to do in my stereo track. And you can see that as soon as I insert the beam to the stereo track, the Dolby Atmos composer already is receiving the audio. So if I press play, you can see that the stereo audio is going to the bed. I can create an object with this stereo file. Um, all I have to do is go to the beam, and instead of um, having it as a composite, I just convert it to an object. And you can see that it has taken the object here. So now from the Dolby Atmos beam, I can control the rotation and the size and the elevation of my stereo object by simply selecting the two spots of audio and just controlling the azimuth and the elevation and the distance, etc., etc. Let me just make it stereo. Okay, now when it comes to a 712 surround channel, let's see how it works. I'm going to add my 712 track. And I'm going to add the 712 file. And then all I have to do is add the beam to this track. And you can see that it automatically has detected that 712 a beam and is sending it to the bed. So if I press play, you can see that um, the bed is being populated. So I can also change this to be an object. And once I do the object, you can see that it has taken the needed objects. And again, I also have the possibility to just uh, play with the position and the size of this three-dimensional object. So it works really, really well. And when it comes to first order Ambisonics files, how will it be? Let me just add a first order Ambisonics track. And I'm going to add my first order Ambisonics file. Now, this is an Ambisonics track, so you cannot add the beam to the Ambisonics track because then um, uh, the Fiddler um, beam is going to be sent in Ambisonics to the composer. It's not going to work. So I have to have a similar approach to that that I had with uh, the Dolby Atmos uh, renderer that comes with Nuendo, which is insert a group track. So let me just add a new group track. It can be any width I want. So I'm going to make it, I don't know, let's just say 714. And I'm going to send my Ambisonics track to that group. 
Let me just rename the group, which is going to be first of them, Sonics 2714. So now I'm going to change the decoder to our AB decoder because I like its quality better. And if I press play, you can see that it's being converted, but it's not yet being sent. And for sending it to the um, composer, all I have to do is simply insert the beam in the 714 group track. So I'm going to insert the beam. And once I insert the beam, you can see that you have here the beam being received and being sent to the bed. So if I press play, the bed is properly being populated. So if I want to convert this um, to a three-dimensional object, all I have to do is just uh, convert the beam to objects. And you can see that the object is being grabbed here. So if I press play, um, I can play with the object size and rotation and whatever I want from the Dolby Atmos beam. Works really well. And the same I can do with the third order Ambisonics file. Let me just add the audio track, which is going to be a third order Ambisonics track. And I'm going to add the third order Ambisonics file. So with the third order Ambisonics file added, all I will have to do is just like with the first order Ambisonics um, to send uh, this track to a group track that fulfills my needs. So first of all, I'm going to change the decoder to our higher order Ambisonics decoder. And then I'm going to create a group track, which is going to be, which is going to be, let's just say 712. So third order Ambisonics to 712. And I'm going to send my third order Ambisonics track there. So in my third order Ambisonics track, I change the output to third order Ambisonics to 712. And if I press play, you can see that it's being decoded properly. So now all I have to do is just simply send my group track to the Dolby Atmos composer with the beam. So I'm going to go to my third order Ambisonics to 712 and add the beam there. And as you can see, it has been added here. So if I press play, you can see that it's being populated in the bed. Again, I can change this to be a three-dimensional object by simply going to the beam and changing the pan mode to objects. And you can see that the three-dimensional object has been added. So now I can play with the object size, rotation, etc. So if I press play, You can see that now this is a three-dimensional object. And really, really, really quickly, and without going uh, very deep into it, I created my Dolby Atmos mix using the Dolby Atmos composer. So you notice that I didn't go to the seventh order Ambisonics file because Nuendo doesn't support seventh order Ambisonics as of today, unfortunately. Hopefully, with an upcoming update uh, throughout the year, um, we will be able to see this happening. It will be awesome for the immersive audio community. And that was Nuendo and Cubase Pro. And now let's explore Logic Pro. I think it was the first DAW that included Adobe Atmos Renderer. I'm not sure if it was that one or Nuendo, but I think it was uh, Logic Pro. So as I said it, Logic Pro includes uh, Adobe Atmos Renderer. You cannot create uh, three-dimensional objects with it. It does uh, support um, surround sound natively. And thanks to the Audio Brewers ecosystem, you can work with it in a first order Ambisonics track. So I'm just going to go to the DAW. The first thing I'm going to do is convert this empty project to a Dolby Atmos project. For that, I'm just going to go to Mix Dolby Atmos. And I'm going to set the special audio to Dolby Atmos. And you will see that the renderer has been automatically added. And now this is a Dolby Atmos project. And so if I drag my first track, which is the stereo track to my project, you can hear that it sounds, you can hear that it's in, coming out in stereo from my master bus. Let me just delete this track here. And so um, if I open the renderer, you will see that there is no object yet. That means that this track is going to my bed. And so if I wanted to create an object with it, all I will have to do is just simply go to the panner and select 3D object panner. Once I do that, 
you can see that the object appears here. It says 3D object, but that doesn't mean that this is a three-dimensional object. It is still a stereo object, but it's in the three-dimensional space of the Dolby Atmos Mix. So with the panner now, I can move the object around the head of the listener. And I can also control the height. And like that, I can be moving my stereo object around the listener's head. So this is how it works with stereo tracks. What happens with immersive tracks? Let's just see what happens. Let me just import the new file, which is going to be a 712 file for that. I'm just going to create a new audio track and I'm going to import the file with it. I'm going to use the import dialog because sometimes when you drag it from outside, it just doesn't recognize it well. So I'm just going to do this. And you see here that it has detected it as a surround track. I cannot really visualize the channels for some reason. I really don't like that from um, Logic. But anyway, it says that it's a, a surround, so it means that it's surround. So if I press play, let me just lower the volume. It's going to my bed. That's great. And if I want to convert this to a real three-dimensional object, I can't. So I am completely stuck to stereo and mono objects with logic. I can add 712 uh, files, but they are going to the bed. They have to go to the bed always, unfortunately. Okay, let's move on to Ambisonics. So for Ambisonics, I'm going to create a new track and I'm going to import our file, which will work out of the box thanks to the Audio Brewers ecosystem. So once I open the first order Ambisonics file, I am going to add as an insert the AB decoder. And once I do that, the file will automatically be decoded. In this case, it is being decoded to stereo, but since I want to decode it to uh, 712, I'm just going to change here to 712. And if I press play, you can see that it's being decoded to 712, no problem. The, the sound is now 712. Unfortunately, again, you cannot create a three-dimensional object with this sound because, again, Logic is stuck with uh, mono or stereo objects. If you want to have um, surround or immersive audio, you are stuck to the bed. You cannot do anything about it. So if I check it out, you can see that now you have your 712 native file, your 712, which was a first order ambisonics decoded to 712, and your stereo, which is now going to the object. And that is all I can do with Logic because Logic doesn't support second order or third order or seventh order ambisonics files. Now, what happens if I decide to use Dolby Atmos Composer with Logic? Can I do it? Let's check it out. So first of all, what I'm going to do is remove the Dolby Atmos properties of this project. And remove the Atmos renderer. And now I'm going to add the Dolby Atmos composer from Fiddler Audio. And you can see that here is the composer. If I press play, you have no sound because the sound is not being received by the Dolby Atmos composer yet. So what I'm going to have to do now is simply beam each of these tracks to the Dolby Atmos composer. Let's go to my first track, which was the stereo track. And all I have to do is insert the Dolby Atmos uh, beam from Fiddler Audio. And you can see that it is receiving the stereo sound now. And if I press play, the sound is going to the bed correctly. That is awesome. And can I create an object with it? Let's see. If I go to the pan mode and I make it object, you can see that now the sound is a stereo object, which is great because now I can just grab this and I can rotate it around the head of the listener. Um, let's just check it out. So with the Dolby Atmos Composer, you can again create a stereo object just like with the Logic uh, renderer. What happens with the 712 track? So with the 712 track, let's try and do the same. I'm going to add the Dolby Atmos bin. 
And once I do it, you can see that the audio has appeared here, which means that the beam is now beaming 712 audio to the Dolby Atmos composer. So if I press play. You can see that now the audio is being routed to my bed. So if I wanted to create a three-dimensional object with this, all I will have to do is go to the pan mode and change it to object. And just like that, I already have a real three-dimensional object using Logic and the Dolby Atmos Composer. So if I press play, I can change the properties of this three-dimensional object by changing the azimuth, the elevation, the distance or the spread or whatever. If I press play, So this opens a completely new door for those who work with Logic and really want to take advantage of the immersive properties of a Dolby Atmos mix, and they happen to have immersive audio. Now let's move on to our first order ambisonics audio. Right after the decoder, I'm going to add the beam again. And you can see that the beam again is working correctly, is detecting my 712 audio. And if I press play, it's going to my bed correctly. So if I were to convert this to an object, all I would have to do is go to the pan mode and set it to objects. And like that, I have another three dimensional object. With this object, I can now change the azimuth, the elevation, the distance, the spread, everything really three-dimensionally without having to use the bed. So I can just select all these guys. And if I press play, I can change the directions of my object. Like that, I can use the Dolby Atmos Composer from Fiddler Audio to solve the issue that I had with the um, Dolby Atmos render that comes with Logic, which is I'm stuck with mono or stereo objects. I mean, what is the use of having uh, immersive uh, Dolby Atmos renderer if you are going to be stuck in mono or stereo objects? Well, Dolby Atmos Composer fixes that for us. And this is all we can do with Logic Pro. We cannot go to uh, second order or seventh order ambisonics files, but this is enough for most people. Um, with this, you can create your mixes and you can absolutely create three-dimensional objects if you decide to use the Adobe Atmos Composer. Reaper is known for being a very, very powerful DAW with a very small CPU footprint, but at the same time is also known for being a little bit complex when it comes uh, to creating um, more uh, difficult mixes. But we can say that Reaper natively supports tracks of any width, literally, so it can be immersive or it can be ambisonics from first order to seventh order. Also, Reaper doesn't include uh, Dolby Atmos renderer, uh, but you can use um, the Dolby Atmos composer of Fiddler Audio for creating uh, your Dolby Atmos mixes. Um, you can also create uh, three-dimensional objects with it. So that is the cool thing about Reaper. For its price, it's really, really, really a good deal. Now we have here an empty project of a Reaper. I'm going to be adding each file to a track and I'm going to very quickly be creating a project here in my studio. So first of all, all I have to do is adapt the mix to be Dolby Atmos uh, friendly. In my case, because I have a 714 uh, setup, I'm going to have track channels to be 12. And it's going to go from first to 12. And that's all I have to do for the time being. I'm also going to insert the Dolby Atmos composer in the master bus. That way, my audio is going to be routed to the Dolby Atmos Composer. And so let's get started. I'm going to add my stereo track to it. You can see that Reaper automatically um, adds the track and makes it stereo. So if I press play, you can see that nothing is sounding. And that is because you have the Dolby Atmos Composer in the master bus. All I have to do is insert the beam in the track. And once I insert the beam, you can see that the composer already is receiving that track. So if I press play, 
you can see that it's now sounding and it's being sent to the bed. I can change this configuration to be a stereo object, of course. So if I change it, the pan mode to objects, you can see that now this is an object and it has taken the stereo object. So if I press play, I can customize the rotation and the elevation and the width and whatever I want from my stereo object. So that was pretty easy, and now I have my um, stereo object. Now let's move on to our next track, which is going to be the 712 track. All I have to do is drag my file to the mix, and let me just close this beam. And if I insert the beam into this track, you can see that the Dolby Atmos composer is already detecting that it's a 712 track. So if I open my Dolby Atmos Composer. And if I press play, you can see that the audio is being sent to the bed. I can convert this to a three-dimensional object again by changing the pan mode to objects. And you can see that here it has grabbed the three-dimensional object. So if I press play, I can just play with my object's orientation and um, rotation. And like that, I have my three-dimensional object ready. Now let's move on to our first order Ambisonics file. For the first order Ambisonics file, all I have to do is insert it to a new track. And then I have to decode the Ambisonics file to something that I want. Um, so in this case, I'm going to add my AB decoder. And I'm going to set its output to be, I don't know, uh, 10 channels, which is going to be as around 712. So if I press play, you can see that now I have a 712 decoding. And after the decoder, all I have to do is insert the beam. So once I insert the beam, um, the uh, Dolby Atmos beam is already detecting that this is a 712 file. So if I open um, the Dolby Atmos composer and I press play, whoops, sorry for the volume. Let me just lower it a bit. You can see that the bed is being automatically populated. I can quickly change this to be a three-dimensional object. So all I have to do will be change the pan, the pan mode to objects. And you can see that it has grabbed the objects it needs to be three-dimensional. So now I can reshape, resize, rotate, and do whatever I want with this three-dimensional object. So if I press play. And like that, I can have my three-dimensional object um, being reshaped. Let's move on to our third order Ambisonics file. So for that, all I have to do is drag the third order Ambisonics file. And just like I did with uh, my previous track, I have to decode it. So I'm going to use AB decoder. But this time I'm going to use the higher order Ambisonics decoder. And you can see that I am decoding right now to 916. Let's just leave it in 916, just, you know, to try it. So this is a 916 track now. You can see that it's decoding uh, properly. And I'm going to add the beam. And you see that right now it's being sent to uh, my 712 bed. I'm not sure if it has detected that it's a 916. Yes, it has because I have the Y channels, I have the 16 channels. So yes, the beam detects automatically that this is a 916 object, which is like a massive three-dimensional object. So I'm going to go to Dolby Atmos Composer and I'm going to change this to a three-dimensional object. So in pan mode, I'm going to make it object and you see that it has taken all the objects it needs to create this massive three-dimensional object. So if I press play, you see that it has worked magically. Now I have a 916 object, a 712 object, a stereo object, 
and another 712 object. Yes, everything works very nice. And now let's add our seventh order ambisonics mammoth file. So for doing that, all I have to do is drag the file to a new track. And you see here that you have the 64 channel and seventh order ambisonics file because Reaper supports seven order ambisonics width. So all I have to do now is decode this file to something I want. So for that, I'm gonna add AB decoder higher order. And you see that it has already detected that it's a seventh order ambisonics and is decoding to 916. So if I press play, you can see that it's decoding properly. And now let's add the beam and see how this works with a 64 channel audio track. So if I add the beam, let's see what happens. And boom, it has detected that it's a 916 um, track. So if I open my decoder, it is being decoded to 916. I'm going to leave it like that because it's a very, very uh, complex type of object. And if I open my Dolby Atmos Composer, you see that if I press play, it's being sent to my bed properly. And I can also convert that to a three-dimensional object by simply changing the pan mode to objects. And now you see that it has taken all the objects it needs to create the three-dimensional object. And like that, I can reshape the size and the orientation of this object very easily. So all I have to do is just press play and just play with the rotation of it. So it works really, really, really well with a uh, Reaper. I mean, you can really do a Dolby Atmos mix with Reaper without the need of the Dolby Atmos uh, renderer from Dolby using the uh, Dolby Atmos composer from Fiddler Audio. And you can have three dimensional objects, things that you wouldn't be able to have with the Dolby Atmos uh, renderer from Dolby. And this to me is a winner. And here is where I'm going to stop with the DOS, because the DOS that I haven't mentioned, which are Bitwig, Luna, um, Cakewalk, and Ableton, don't natively support surround sound or Dolby Atmos. Some of you will say that um, Ableton supports um, Ambisonics and Dolby Atmos through plugins like Envelope and stuff like that. But to me, having to import a mono or a stereo file to make it Ambisonics is not the same than being able to import an Ambisonics or a surround file. This is why I'm not going to include it on the list. After this DOS, here is my personal rank. On the sixth place, we have Logic Pro X, which is a Mac only DAW. Some of you will say that there's nothing I can do about it, and I agree, but still worth mentioning. However, the most important facts that um, earned it the sixth place was, first of all, that the tracks cannot really have a free width. Like, a, they can only be stereo or whatever the width of my Dolby Atmos bed is, which limits my working uh, capabilities um, to be either stereo, mono, or 712. Additionally, there is no support for Ambisonics. Thanks to the Audio Brewers ecosystem, we can work with first order Ambisonics, but still that's not enough for a Dolby Atmos mix. I would like to have tracks that are 16 channel width so that I could work with third order Ambisonics recording. And also the fact that it doesn't have three dimensional objects. Like there's too many things that are missing for it to be above in the ranking. On the fifth place, we have DaVinci Resolve, which is really, really getting in the game. It supports Dolby Atmos. It supports first, second, and third order Ambisonics thanks to the Audio Brewers ecosystem. And you can definitely create three-dimensional objects really easily um, using the Dolby Atmos composer from Fiddler Audio. So you can pretty much have any type of track width from mono, stereo, 5.1, Dolby Atmos uh, 712, 714, 916. There is a whole bunch of capabilities for the track suite, and that's what makes it really, really flexible. On the fourth place, we have Studio One from Prisonus, which is a really, really easy um, doll to set up when it comes to Dolby Atmos. I really, really like it. I like the fact that you can have multiple widths on the track, so you can work with mono, stereo, 5.1, 712, 714, 916 tracks. And I like the fact that we were able to make it 
Ambisonics compatible from first to third order. It comes with an internal Dolby Atmos renderer, however, you cannot create three-dimensional objects with it for some reason. It would be awesome if you could do it. Um, however, with the Dolby Atmos Composer from Fiddler Audio, you can solve that. So if you are watching this video, Presonus, please add three-dimensional objects and it will definitely be one of my favorite DOS. In the third place, we have Pro Tools. Pro Tools, which was really slacking in the technology field. Um, they weren't really implementing anything new. In their latest updates, they finally added 7th order Ambisonic support, and they also added an internal Dolby Atmos renderer, which is awesome. It's a very easy um, DAW to set up, and I still cannot understand how Avid added 7th order Ambisonic support, but let us stuck with mono or stereo objects. I wish you could create three-dimensional objects with Pro Tools. It would be my 100% favorite DAW if you could, because if I could create three-dimensional objects and have 7th order Ambisonics on the same DAW, to me, that is just the killer app. So Avid, if you are watching this video, add support for three-dimensional objects and you will have the king of Dolby Atmos mixing. On the second place, we have one of my favorite DAWs, which is Reaper. It is pretty much the most flexible DAW that there is out there. It doesn't support anything, but at the same time, it supports everything because any track can be any width from two channels all the way to 128. So you can support stereo, quad, 5.1, 714, 916, first order ambisonics, third order ambisonics, seventh order ambisonics. You can support anything and it consumes barely any CPU. Unfortunately, it doesn't contain a Dolby Atmos renderer. However, for the price, I still believe it's just a complete bargain. And you can definitely use it with Dolby Atmos Composer and create your three-dimensional objects, your Dolby Atmos mixes in Reaper, and it will work like beautifully. And in the first place, we have Nuendo. It is a really hard first place. The fact that it supports three-dimensional objects, that it has a Dolby Atmos um, renderer included, that it supports surround sound natively, that it supports first, second, and third order ambisonics natively, it pretty much supports everything natively. So this is why I'm giving it the first place. However, I wish they had added support for seventh order ambisonics. Like I still don't understand how come Steinberg added 7th order Ambisonic support to the VST SDK, but not to Nuendo. I mean, it's already there, it's ready. All you had to do was add the tracks into um, Nuendo and we will have it all. Like, if you do this, it will definitely be the best DAW out there. And finally, hats off to Dolby Atmos Composer from Fiddler Audio. It is an amazing tool. You can literally create a Dolby Atmos mix using any DAW you want, and you can create three-dimensional objects using any of these six DAWs that I have reviewed today, which makes it, to me, the ultimate um, Dolby Atmos renderer. So if you have Dolby Atmos Composer and you have any DAW, you are set for life. You can create your Dolby Atmos mixes. And this is my ranking. The first, second, and third place are really, really tight. They could be interchanged really easily because each of the DOS is just missing one little thing from becoming the best. Let's see what 2024 has to bring when it comes to Dolby Atmos development. I really hope that any of these manufacturers of DOS can step their game and create the single best DO out there. All we need is seventh order ambisonics, three dimensional objects, and a Dolby Atmos renderer included, and then you will be the best DO out there. I will see you on the next video, and hopefully I will make this video again in 2025 to see if anything has changed ever since today. Thanks for watching and we'll keep in touch.